Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're excited! <laughs> Big boxes! Big boxes! Amy looks short. <laughs> that means it's a good day. Yes. <laughs> I was told this order was going to be smaller than the last one and I feel lied to. <laughs> well, I thought it was going to be and then they told me, well, this box isn't quite full and then you got to order more. Yeah, well. <laughs> What you they do? really had to twist my arm. Yeah, I, I can tell you were you were tortured by having to go through such a a terrible thing. I'm just saying it better be good. <laughs> oh, I think this is a I great one. I know it's going to be good. Okay, here we go. And we start with discus. Nice. Gorgeous little red melon discus. This is definitely one of my favorites. Hey, look. That bright color. Oh, they're cute too. They're adorable. <laughs> That color is just gonna <laughs> jump out. Yeah, especially if you've got like a nice pattern one with it that contrasts. Oh, I was just saying them. how good they're gonna look in our text. Oh yes. <laughs> really good with this guy. Uh -huh. Wow. Ooh. A pigeon checkerboard discus. They look great. You know what's my favorite thing about discus, and this is gonna be really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> how obvious their lateral line is. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting favorite thing about discus, but I yeah. don't know if I would call it stupid. Just <laughs> it's notable like, that you're you're a scientist more than you're an artist. <laughs> you do appreciate the warning though, Tom. I, I was like, <laughs> it has nothing to do with how beautiful they are. It's just their anatomy is really cool. <laughs> so wait, how about a, how beautiful Corridor Similis are? I think this has been the kind of like the you are hearts, Cory Cat. No, they're so good. <laughs> We've got a yeah. lot of a good variety of Corys right now. Well, those are some of the best, I think. Brazilian Cardinals, Cardinal Tetras from Brazil. Great size, too. I'm trying to help you fill all your groups. Very. Look at the size of those. These is Gardener Eye? Yeah. Nice. Cardinal Pentex Gardener Eye Killifish. We've said it before, we'll say it again. If you want to try your hand at discus, but you're a little nervous about it, Gardener Eyes. You mean chili fish. fish. <laughs> what did I say? Discus. Discus. Wow. <laughs> okay, if you want to try your hand at colorful fish but can't handle discus, uh, garden rye chili. Right, so there garden rye chili. Wow. I do that a lot though. <laughs> Just swap your wow. words around. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of discus, look more killies. I mean guppies. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Those are some good looking guppies. Yeah, these are gold snake skins and there should, I think, be males and females, but we will. Definitely seen males. Oh, there is oh, a female there in there. At least one. These are beautiful. I can't Hopefully wait to see them color one. up. It's a very elegant guppy. Very mm, indeed. Quite. Yeah. <laughs> Resbora dorsal ocelatus. Is that what that is? No. no. Oh, those, those are the emerald eyes. Yes, those were your Excellent. Best. Emerald eye resbora. So that's a resbora that I don't know why it hasn't been a staple here. It is a fantastic little nano resbora. Yeah, I think this is full size, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. they don't very big. Yep. Huh. Your Alphamoides auroras, correct? Yep, that makes them exclamation point rasboras. Tiny, get a great orange as opposed to the chili rasbora red. Um, I ordered a lot of nano fish on this order because we're clearing out some of our nano tanks because we just added on um, 10 betta tanks to our store. So Excellent. Which means <laughs> so we'll have room for more tiny stuff. There's some bettas in here, huh? No, no, no. bettas in there. <laughs> we totally, for anyone wondering, we totally tripled our betta capacity here. <laughs> This is always a favorite of mine. This kind of discus, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't resist. By the way, I'm gonna play that joke the whole time. Right? You do so it these killifish, no, I'm just kidding. These are desert gobies. Um, I love them. It's such an active little goby, and then the color that that male gets, mm -hmm. yellow with the black fins, awesome fish. And it's a chunkier goby, they're very <laughs> solid. If I did that right, you might be able to just throw that box. You did it close enough to write that I'm counting it as I'm counting it as good job. Bro. There we go. Tried to streamline this thing as much as possible. Excellent. <laughs> and what's behind box number two? Fish. A new car. <laughs> A new car. <laughs> and oh, boy. no spring in that rubber band. I see a big It'll box, a big bag of big squirmy wormy things. Wow, oh, look at that. I really didn't expect us to get them. These are tiny spiny eels. Those are tiny. Um, I think this is full size, so yes really? they are. Oh, they're so cool. I believe 15 cents 
centimeters is what it said. So that's pretty much <laughs> that's this. It, yeah. Um, this wow. is an eel that should be comfortable in a 40 breeder. Super cool. Yeah. Is Those it, are great. Is it weird or right that my instinctive response is I want like to stick my hands in and feel them wiggling? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing about those, these squirmy wormies will squirmy wormy their way right out of just about anything. Through so, the tiniest holes. Yes. Keep so, that tank really well covered. Locked down. So like, you want to think like a prison guard, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. An octopus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. All right. Ah, Corridori White Spinot. That is the pattern. I love that. And this is not a core we get very frequently at all, so it's exciting to get them in. They're starting to get the iridescence that they get. They come in a little larger than they normally do. Yeah. Oh, good. You got me more Achilles. Epipletosinga <laughs> is not an epipletus species that I've done before. They are related to my all-time favorite fish, uh, Epipletus annulatus, the crown killie. Yeah, we figured these would be a good consolation prize. Yeah. The pattern on them is really unique and cool. Mm -hmm. It's like stripey. It's like stripey spots. <laughs> yep. They are very cool fish. I love yeah. them. Good job. I know you ordered those for me. I know you ordered these for Charles. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. They came in good. Oh my goodness. So I was really excited about these because this is the first time I've ever seen this species. I've been looking for them for eight years. And it is? Beta Crankus, also known as the strong beta. Okay. Um, they are in the Dominion Tata complex. And that's the entire complex, those two species. Those two species. Nice. <laughs> they do look pretty similar to the Dimidiata, but they have a round tail instead of a spade tail, right? Yeah. This means that I have now held an entire complex in my hands. Sweet. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yes to nerds like us. I'm sorry, geeks. That is important. <laughs> and hopefully in a month or two, you'll be able to say you bred an entire complex. Yay. <laughs> Luminatus rainbows. That is a rainbow fish that is just, it is hard to beat. Um, it is an orange dwarf rainbow fish with really cool blue eyes. They're part of the blue eye rainbow fish group. And I think this group is destined for a tub this summer. Yes. We should have some more coming soon too, but perfect tubbing fish. Yep, for sure. Very we cool. also have other pseudomugles in the store which are perfect for the same kind of project. We hint, do. hint. <laughs> Breed lots of pseudomugles for us and bring us a whole bunch of them in the fall. Are those little bumblebee cats? They are. This is Achaisis Vespa. Um, I'm always on the look for like nano oddballs. This oh, yeah. is full size for this fish wow. at about inch and a half, two inches. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they're they kind of like those moose face loaches. They like to bury down in uh -huh. sand. They have really cool behaviors. So we're definitely going to need to get these guys on some Daphne, I think, right. but they are really cute. They are cool. Not a fish you're going to see all the time, but it'll be really exciting when you do, right? Exactly. See, I kind of like fish like that. I was describing it to a customer the other day. I always love it when I have a quote unquote Sasquatch fish in my hand. Yes. Oh, right. Or every once in a while you catch a glimpse and you're like, oh! <laughs> and it looks so cool. And if you put it in a five gallon, which you probably could with those, mm -hmm. seeing them isn't that out of the ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> sure. They won't get lost. Speaking of good nano fish mm -hmm. with Boracabotai, yes. or Boracabotai rather. No, they're. Oh, you're right. Uh, Microdivario. Micro Microdivario. It's Kibotai a confusing one because Divario to me means Daniel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Daniels and Resboras are super close to the Yes, but one has fat body and one has skinny body. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> God, I love their body Tech shape. Taxonomy is hard. Yeah, Kubotai reservoirs are ab an absolute staple mm -hmm. here at Watercolors. We love that fish. As they should be. Yes, we do so well with that fish. Uh, black ruby barbs. Nice. This has been a store staple lately. The color, the personality. Yep. These are the tiger barb that people should be keeping, I yes. think. Well, because they're not mean. For a while, I've been like, those Pethia barbs are great for uh, black brush algae. And then, for some reason, everyone honed in on this, and I never expected that. Just because, yeah. oh sure, like rosy barbs are a staple, but I like these better personally. So I'm happy everyone's glommed onto them. They're very cool. Nice to have them <laughs> so Amy, you 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 did not lie. Oh wait, you did lie. You said no, I didn't order bettas. She ordered lots of bettas. <laughs> Look at these guys. Half moons and crown tails Gorgeous. this time. So Ooh, wow! Look at the purple on yeah. him. Yeah, beautiful. And on him. Ooh, yeah, that's like almost mustard gas like. It is. And these, these crown tails look like fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> this one with the like turquoisey blue body yeah. and the really good red fins. 
Love it. What a great group. Man, the betas they have been sending us lately. Like, they're amazing. Almost they're amazing. Very they're amazing. You guys have done well. <laughs> I just scared the dog with the box. Oh, my splash. Oh. <laughs> That's a shade of blue I have not seen in years. Yeah. Both of them have just. Love it. Love it. Okay, what's next? What's next? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's just scoot this box closer to you. Okay. L92 Plecos. Oh, yes, those are, I think, Delta head spots, they're called. Delta head spots. Um, they're a driftwood eating Pleco. I think that they're a three or four inch or so. Oh, good. Pretty Not much. Too big. Cool. I was L92. Looking for more cool Plecos. You've been doing good with that lately. Yeah, they almost have like a whiptail cat look to them. Just because they have a similar lifestyle. <laughs> so Amy, I'm, I'm curious about this fish order. Sometimes you order things that aren't fish. You got frogs! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. Oh, frogs are so cool. You know what, if you've been in here and talked to Nick, he is a dwarf frog expert, so I got these for him. Excellent. Um, well they done. don't fit in every tank, but in the tanks they do fit. They're so much fun. They are cool. Um, and they're really cute. Yeah. These are the dwarf, right? The they they dwarf. are the actual dwarf frogs. Okay. No more clawed frogs. We're not doing that again. Cool. <laughs> I like it. Those are fun. Cloud, speaking of dwarf, not dwarf, <laughs> clown loaches. Oh, they're so cute. That is an amazing staple in the hobby. Yes. The thing to remember about clown loaches is they do get big. They will get up to 15 inches. They're very slow growing, but they're yeah. a big loach. They but love to be in groups. They are easily my favorite with the loaches. Yeah. Not few things make me happier than a fat 10 inch clown loach. Oh, with, yeah. a, with 10 of them in a tank. In yeah. a 300 gallon tank. Exactly. Oh, it's an amazing look. Yeah. Speaking of amazing looks, how about a bunch of rabbit snails? Yeah, sorry, they're not fish either. <laughs> These are huge. Yeah, they look great. Ready to start breeding right away. One of the things about the rabbit snails some people don't expect is that they do like high temperatures. Okay. So 78 is just the start for them. Really? Yep. All right, keep them hot. Uh, these look like Arnold Schwartz's snails. Yes, they do. <laughs> they're ripped. Two more Cory species, Corydoras sturbe and Corydoras paleatus. Look at those fat I know, they look awesome. I might be taking some of those home. Yeah. <laughs> and also speaking of hot, these guys like it hot. Mm -hmm. These guys don't. Yeah. Yeah. No. So the this is the extreme end. <laughs> yeah. So this is the right here. Keep them around 80. Keep them around 70. Yeah. Ooh, a yep. sand bottom tank with corridor sturbe and a handful of those rabbit snails running around. You got oh. those nice oranges that you'll see coming out. That could be a very cool tank. I'll put some on this side. Probably run out of room now. I'm down to my last bucket. All right. <laughs> What do we got here? Ah, uh, thank you. Yes. What's yes, the this display? Sundadanyo gablinus, which is turning into a favorite of mine. Uh, the Sundadanyo group is sort of the, the small tetra group, the parachyridons of uh, Southeast Asia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they get blue and red, like a cardinal and neon tetra. Instead of that neon color of cardinals and neons, this is more of a metallic. It's like a jewel color. Yeah, yeah it's so beautiful it's, though, and it does shine all the time. It does shine. Yeah, they're they're amazing fish. Come see them on our display. Um, they're going to be there, oh, probably not for long, because once people discover these fish, they tend to go quick. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then another classic <coughs> nano fish. Can you for us? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> all right, all right. Enough of that, young man. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. We've got like we've got a tiny fish in every different color that we just sort of have honed in on. Like the reds are the chili rasboras, we've got our orange ember tetras, we've got our green cabotas, our blue goblinas. That's great. This we're surge collecting them all. The surge in great little nano fish has been I mean it's, it's so worth it. Oh I'm grateful for mm -hmm. it because those are the fish I like getting it. <laughs> all of these fish to me put them in a more medium sized tank mm -hmm. and just put a whole bunch of them. The goal with our display here with those goblinas, mm -hmm. it's a 40 gallon tank. I want about 50 or 60 of those goblinas yeah. in that tank. And I think it's a little bit amazing. And there's plenty of room for it. Yep. Hey, that, that was pretty good. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? A mono shrimp. Ooh, great size Excellent. mono shrimp. Those look really good. 
<laughs> They're already a little past eating size or something. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bolivian ramps. Yes. Excellent. Oh, wow. Some size. And yeah. they got that like green sheen on them already. Yeah. Definitely some males and females in there too. I think a lot of the tanks that, that we see, adding a pair of some kind of dwarf cichlid mm -hmm. just really accents the tank so well. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Lumpurlucus multifasciatus. This is just one of the coolest shell dwellers. Mm -hmm. They're maybe the most common of the shell dwellers, but to me, they're still a favorite. They've got some great little striking pattern to them. Um, this is a small fish with just a pile of little attitude. Add more shells, make more fish. Mm -hmm. yeah, great little fish. Very cool. Who are you? Ah, uh, Pearl Killy, Australibius. Australibius, for tennis, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can finish meaning black fin, and you can really see that in the bag there. This is one of the dirt spawning South American killifish. This is by far the most successful dirt spawner I've ever had. The number of fry I've gotten from one pair of those exceeds the total of all the nothos I've ever had. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a good selling point. Yeah. Speaking of nothos, this is. Uh, it might be my favorite milfo, but that's so hard to choose. Right. This is rubra pinnis, rubra pinnis, rubra meaning red fin milfo, and the color on that male, I will put that up against just about any domestic feta. Personally, I like this better than the Kopei, but I also love that type of burgundy. It's, they may be a little less multicolored than some of the other milfos, but the saturation it's so is yeah. so yeah, deep colored. It's insane. Insane indeed. He's very handsome boy. <laughs> yo-yo loaches. Love them. Mm -hmm. Called yo-yo loaches because it actually says it right on the fish. <laughs> the fun. pattern looks like Y's and O Y O Y O Y O. So that's what they call the yo-yo loaches. Not because they go up the tank and down the tank like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kind of do that anyway. What's next? What's next? African fire barbs. I know somebody that'll be very interested in this. I love these barbs, honestly. They these are full size at like an inch long. Great pattern, great color, great personality, very peaceful. And they fed very hardy for us too, even right. in our hard Grand Rapids water. Uh, Trifasciatus pencils, very nice. Put those with a group of apistos and bam, instant amazing tank. Or you just want Trifasciata pencils, in which case then you still have an amazing tank. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, it's the fish that I knew would be cool, but I didn't expect to be as beautiful as it is. Wow, you did go uh, unique on these guys. <laughs> these were a customer order too. Cool. Senegal Bashirs. <laughs> yes. This is one of the smaller Bashirs, meaning I think they only get 18 inches long. Right. Um, I'm just trying to see because they're little if they still have their uh, curlies on them, but they don't. No. They're already Such an amazing uh, ancient group of fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is actually not, you know, this genera, but. Um, there's actually evidence of a prehistoric species of bashir that was eaten by Spinosaurus like 120 years ago. That's nice. so cool. That's a good claim to fame. Oh, I used to be eaten by something cool. <laughs> I know the guy who, there's a, a local guy who had bred a couple of their species of bashir, and his biggest challenge was keeping the babies from eating each other. I can see that. Pew. They have big mouths. They do and ferocious appetites. Remember that with anything you decide to put them in. If they can't eat it, they will. Or they'll at least try. Red Tuxedo Swords. Uh, to me, that is just such a classic fish. Really good orange, that black blotch in the middle of them mm -hmm. just accents it so well. I love that fish. Good job. I think the contrast makes the color look even more bright. Yep, I agree. It's a domestic fish that I really like. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> wild, wild rams. rams. Very nice. These it's are a, bigger and nice and colored up this time. Yeah. It's a fish that people mess with, and they do a good job messing with it. Mm -hmm. But the wild ones also don't need to be messed with. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. German blue rams are gorgeous fish. Wild type rams, absolutely gorgeous fish. The wild type, I think, stays a little smaller too. Just a little bit. Sometimes that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. What's this? Trilineatus cord. You went all out on cord. Good job. I don't even think that's the last great. Corey. Really? Yes, we're Corey crazy. So is everybody else, apparently. Aha! Apisto Agassizi Tefe Blues. So yeah. these guys with those Trilineatus 
pencils yeah. and one of the groups that Corey's swimming underneath, there's like a yeah. point system right there. Somebody needs to just do that. They look really good, Charles. Ooh, look at the yellow. I know. And they are definitely different than the Tefe not blue pearls that yeah. we had. So. <laughs> ah, how pissed I know, right? There's SB Res Boras. Very good. Excellent. Nice little group. Group. Those are fish that accidentally bred here. They're, apparently they're easy. They're great, <laughs> beautiful fish. What do we have here? Rummy Nose Tetras. Nice. Excellent staple in the hobby. Who doesn't need a group of Rummy Nose Tetras? Perfect school. Which is that? Those are blue coral. Oh, nice. So they're not showing up too well in the yeah. bag because that blue is pretty much all in iridescence. So right. once Charles fattens them up a little bit, <laughs> that's when they're going to show They'll up. They'll get some great color to them. Yep. Good job. Wow. Quite the contrast from the SB Resbora. This is Hedomorpha. Um, fantastic. Also called the Har Harlequin Resbora. Absolutely gorgeous. Staple in the hobby. Uh, beautiful fish. Yeah, we're gonna have to try another of the, the new ones yeah. pretty soon too. More rummy nose. Yes, good. Because oh, why have some rummy nose when you can have lots of rummy nose? Buy them by the dozen. Yeah. <laughs> by the 50, by the 100. <laughs> Last box, by the way, Amy, so far, you know, if we stopped right here, I would say you did great. Well, you so, don't even know what's coming up. So. I know, so it's, it, it can only go up from here. I knew like three things on this order. <laughs> so. Hey! Oh. <laughs> Yay! What's this? Panda got. Wow! wow. <laughs> oh Boom, get out the way, am I right? <laughs> These aren't Pandagaras. These are Pandagaras. I have Those never seen huge. them that large. Wow. And I don't, I don't even know what to say. If you've been watching our unboxings and I said, Hey, you know if you're watching and you're like, wow, uh, panda gardens are seasonal. They're either really tiny or really big. Yeah, we just switched seasons. <laughs> yeah. so, those definitely count as really big. That's the biggest I've ever seen. I, uh, I didn't That's think amazing. they got that big. Sparkling garamis. Such a cool little garami. Mm -hmm. The Anabantoid group is full of such amazing little creatures. Sparkling garamis can go in two and a half gallon tank and yeah. you're just fine. Yeah, they're tiny. They still have that really nice garami personality, mm -hmm. but are very peaceful. Yep. And a cute little pack. Mm -hmm. Licor licorice garami light. Yeah, licorice garami easy. Yeah. Ah! Another bag of giant pandagaras. Oh, yeah, pandagaras. Pandagaras. <laughs> we talked about how they'll like kind of crawl all over you and clean off your dead skin. I'm a little worried about it. Those <laughs> ones. <laughs> crawl all over you, take your finger off. <laughs> I didn't need that. Large neon tetras, great. Mm, beautiful. Gotta always have neon tetras in. It's hard to always have neon tetras in, but you know, they're, they're, they're good. It's a noble effort. What the heck? Oh. Oh, those are, same guy ordered. Albino. That he wanted an albino and a regular. Interesting, cool. <laughs> those will be fun to have it around for It is really while. nice to have, to like see them, tag out with them for a little bit, right. and then not <laughs> to have to grow them out in your own tank. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had a soft spot for fish that don't look like fish. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that counts. Yeah, very cool. Ooh, speaking of fish that don't look like fish. Yeah. Glass cats. Fish that look like These aliens. Ah, oh, they're so cool. Mm, and when you're holding them up in that sunlight, you just get that rainbow yeah. ripple off of them. What an amazing fish. I remember always thinking that they were a challenging fish, but I didn't know quite how to keep them. Yeah. They really want to be with friends. Yeah. They, they don't do well by themselves. When they're in a group, they get ignored by other fish because they just can't see them. Beautiful fish. Yeah, they don't like school, they just hover. Yeah, and last but not least, gold sailfin mollies. Those are These beautiful. These have some good size to them. Yeah, really. These should be the ones that get quite large with a really nice big sailfin on them. Mm -hmm. um, should be great hair algae eaters, but mollies are definitely bullies. If you're thinking of them as if they're platies, you might have some problems <laughs> with some of your other fish. They are not the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Well, Amy, as usual, you did fantastic. That was a fun one. That was a lot of fun. A little something for all of us in that one. <laughs> These will be going through their typical two-week quarantine process. Make sure they're good and healthy and ready by the time they go home with somebody. Um, by the time this video comes out, there'll probably be about a week left. So come on down to the gallery and check them out. Check us out on Facebook. That's uh, where we're posting just general day-to-day -day store updates. Instagram for a lot of good pictures and videos. And check out the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery podcast. This one was a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun too. Thanks a lot for watching and let's keep those hands wet.